Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of uh, our Hangout, the Authentic Caribbean Rum Hangout, where we, we try to um, educate and inform people about uh, the fantastic range that we have here on Authentic Caribbean Rum, and really just um, have a good time and talk about um, what we all love, which is uh, rum and drinks in general. As always, I'm joined by, by our international panel members, um, starting from the left, we have uh, Amit Sood uh, in London. Hi, Amit. Hi, everyone. Good then to next, to, next to him, we have uh, Gabriele from Montreal. Hi, Gabriele. We have Jason Cousins uh, next to Gabriele from uh, New York. And last but not least, Miguel Figueredo uh, in the lovely Caribbean outfit and the lovely Caribbean backdrop, making us all feel very, very envious. Hello, Miguel. Anyway, today's um, subject is um, how to drink rum. And, um, you know, it's an age old question. Um, I'm sure everyone has their uh, preconceptions on, on how rum should be uh, drunk. Um, but uh, we have four experts who have been serving drinks and, and rum for a long time. And we're going to try and find out how it should be drunk if there is. Uh, one way or, or numerous ways it can be drunk. Um, I wanted to start off with, with a, you know, your thoughts on what is really the golden age of uh, cocktails or mixology or bartending. I think the, 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 you know, the amount of innovation and you know, different trends is, is really hard to, to keep up. But I think it's fantastic for the industry and obviously fantastic for you guys. Um, so what do you think in general about you know the, the the explosions of of, of the cocktail culture and and what is your personal taste as to to serving drinks? Are you are you more of a flair innovation um, uh, kind of bartender or more of a classic uh, straight kind of uh, drinks uh, person? I'll start off with with Amit and then move to the right. So Amit, the floor is yours. Um, I think. Um, <laughs> Sort of innovation at the moment is sort of it, it's got no boundaries, um, and I think that that's very much uh, something you're seeing globally. Uh, different people, different bartenders um, set different trends. I don't I don't think there's uh, one sort of set of trends that you can say are happening everywhere at the moment. Everyone's doing different things um, in in London. UK as well, you know, it's not just London. Um, you've got the guys that embrace kitchen science and embrace, you know, the distillation stuff. You've got the guys that go down the fun route. You've got the guys that are diehard cheeky in there, and their work with sort of innovation is just reincarnating different cheeky sort of things for, for rum. Um, that's where sharing and fun and fire and just to party and, and all that sort of stuff comes into it. Um, overall, I don't think you um, you can have your own feelings and opinions about it as bartenders or as, as a drinker, as a customer. But I think you know, uh, rum is still very much a drink of of the people. Um, it's still finding its feet as far as a straight sipping drink goes. Um, but most people are enjoying it um, with with their favourite mixer, uh, that mixer tends to be, for a lot of people, you know, fizzy and, you know, and and sweet. But that that is the way it is. I think you know the, the there's a massive market of premium soft drinks here in the UK, uh, very adult style soft drinks. Um, so you know, ginger beers had a massive revival. People are brewing their own ginger beer. Um, so that's become a very very sort of familiar frame for rum. A lot of the spiced rum. Guys have, have obviously gone down that road, um, but but overall, I mean, um, premium soft drinks and, and and premium mixers have been a great pairing for the rebirth and regeneration uh, of rum as well. Um, so it's no. exciting. It's exciting overall. Excellent. Um, is that is that the case in in Montreal? I remember you. Uh, the, the Montreal scene was was quite different the last time we spoke, Gabriel. Um, 
What is what is what are the current drinking trends in in Montreal, and how do you like to serve your drinks? Uh, Montreal, the innovation is going really really fast. Um, I think that we, the last two years, maybe lots of bartender um, get in into uh, the world of bartending and cocktail, and it's a um, it's pretty young. It's a pretty young crowd. Um, we have only a few who's been like 10, 15, 20 years who are making this job. And sometimes I think the innovation with rum or other spirit could be really great, but I think sometimes people who's going too far. Um, I have a uh, that you you know that you use a different technique or that you use a classic one for classic cocktail or tiki stuff or whatever. I think that you have that the drink that you are drinking have to stay good. It have to stay that you can drink more than one. Uh, you can drink two, three, four of those drinks, and um, that you don't need to go too far with other ingredients or too far from the base that we know. Um, and sometimes in Montreal, people are going too far. But we're coming back to the classic technique. We're coming back to using really like only fresh ingredients, like the, like crazy um, technique and crazy stuff that at the end your cocktail doesn't taste anything. And um, for rum, I mean, there's there's. All the way is good to drinking. I think the rum has been there for so long. Um, you have strong and strong and delicate cocktail, and you have sticky, you are refreshing and long drinks, and people drink it straight. Shooter of rum all, always been there. I think it's, it's always depend of what about the product, mm -hmm. which rum you are drinking, and um, as you say, depending if it's spice rum or um, the strong rum or brown or, or white or and um, so you can match uh, the flavor with what you are doing um, so depending on uh, what you which which flavor you want to bring you're going to choose the rum for doing yeah absolutely um, Jason um, what what are what are the the what is the situation right now in New York you know it's obviously one of the key cities in the world has always been for, for mixology and wh wh where is it tending towards and, and what do you see in your bar in, or in your uh, work as a consultant? Yeah, I think New York right now has kind of an elevated mainstream and that's classically driven cocktails. Um, so the majority of the bars, the good bars, you know, the great bars, people that, the, one, the ones that people are going to are doing drinks using you know, fresh ingredients classic style recipes, um, and then you have your kind of outlier niche markets or, or bars that are style, they're, you know, stylistically different than, uh, than this, classic, this classic style, so things like Tiki or like Amit mentioned, um, like Kitchen Science, you know, places that are using rotary, uh, rotary evaporators and sous vides and the fancy high-end stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of bars like that, but the people that do do it do it very well. Because to do that poorly, you're not going to make it. Uh, not in New York. You uh, get washed out pretty easily. <laughs> um, but yeah, things uh, you know, things exploded uh, in popularity, co uh, craft cocktail movement um, in the late 20th century and early 21st century, and I think they've kind of plateaued a bit. And now we're moving more towards simpler uh, flavor, flavor profiles, two, three, you know, sorry, three, four, or five ingredient drinks. Um, and then there's a, a big push, I think, towards straight spirits again, or category-driven bars, rum bars, sherry bars, mezcal bars, uh, things like that. Do, is that is that um, happening? Do you have rum bars now appearing in, in you? Not as many as I would like. You know, right now, mezcal bars, mezcal, yeah? agave, places like Maya Well. Um, rum bars, uh, we do have Tiki Monday with uh, Brian Miller, who's kind of our, our local... Uh, Pirate uh, connoisseur of, of rum. He leads uh, a monthly out of um, some of the top bars. It's kind of like a pop up. Um, but no, I, I, New York is ripe for some is for some rum bars, and I think uh, I think the, the the market is going that way. That's that's an interesting uh, movement, I think, and perhaps something that that our rum can learn from because 
normally, and I'll, I'll, I'll ask uh, Miguel this question, you know, normally uh, rum bars are very ticky oriented or, you know, they have this, you know, rum bar is always associated with, uh, with you, know, you know, pirates and the sea and the coconut and, you know, the, whereas, you know, I see that, that tequila bars and mezcal bars where obviously they, they have, you know, their traditions and their heritage and origin. You know, it doesn't have to be necessarily uh, stereotypical, you know, and maybe that's something that, you know, could or might hurt uh, rum, that it's always seen as, a, as sort of a very one-dimensional drink. Um, is that is that fair, or, or how do you think that could be solved? And look, it's a perfect man to ask, you know, wearing a tiki shirt, uh, the palm trees in the background. Uh, what do you think, Mia? Uh Well, I think that... Precisely the fact that we, and uh, when I say we, uh, I put myself in the position of two years ago when I was part of, of the people who were living far away from the Caribbean. We're living far away from the Caribbean. We need to, we kind of need to force the theme, uh, the wrong direction. Uh, you know, like wearing this kind of, thing, taking it to that, to that pirate and tiki theme stuff. But the truth is, here in the Caribbean, it's not that you don't find it, you could find it, but that's not, a, uh, that's not as much as we do in the, in the other countries. The Caribbean, it's their part of, I mean, it's part of their culture, their living, so they don't have to push it. They don't have to bring it to the TK side. They just have to drink with the theme. So it is not that common to find tiki places here. Uh, they're just bars, mm, regular bars with their regular decoration. Actually, they don't put uh, that much money into decoration, but only into you know serving the vessels and stuff. Just the the, uh, the main value here, the stuff, the serving the drinks, not the rest of the thing. They don't really take. The, the, the fact of theming the, the, the restaurant or the bar uh, that serious as we do far away. I assume that's, uh, uh, that's sort of uh, what, you know, what the, the, the tiki precursors like uh, Trader Biggs or Don Beach Cumber, uh, what they were doing uh, was precisely that, to, to force and to push, you know, the, the wrong the imagery mm -hmm. because they were living far away from, from where Rome was coming from. Uh, I don't know, Amit. I know that you were you are quite familiar and really close to people who you know, to Tiki scene in London. Uh, I don't know if you agree with me on that, but that's what I've been seeing here in the Caribbean. The the theme is not a big thing. The rum it is a big thing because that's what they have here. Actually, if you put a mezcal or a tequila or a whiskey bar here, you wouldn't be doing uh, very good. They don't even know what it, what it is. If you get the mezcal, then the same person who's, who's uh, tasting mezcal here because they don't know anything about where mezcal comes from, they wouldn't get it. We do because we've been, you know, shot all the time with uh, training and, and advertisements and people telling us about how the life is where mezcal comes from. So we sort of have an idea. That's a, that's a great question. I'll just follow up, Amit, and I'll let you answer. Um, do you think that, you know, as great a movement it is for rum, uh, you know, which which Tiki is, and, you know, it's fan you know they, they make fantastic drinks, uh, very, very difficult to make, uh, right, uh, but it is, a, it is a great movement, but do you feel that maybe one of the handicaps it has is that it sort of um, puts rum in a, in a, in a box for, for, for rum-themed bars? Uh, is there a way of making a rum theme bar that can perhaps, you know, mm, promote neat drinking or, you know, rum old fashions or rum negronis, something like that? Um, it's interesting, actually, because I think tiki, if you get under the skin of um, what people really think, I think people want to always feel positive about tiki. And I'm talking about the trade now, but taking the consumer aside for one second, here in the UK, because the consumer always engages the tiki as being a fun place, but the bartender is always having fun, and, you know. Um, but 
there's 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 different there's different levels of run bars over here. We've got some really small niche run bars, and we've um, there's there's one particular one called Portside Parlour that's popped up in East London. Uh, but then you've got the rum shacks as well, so places in Notting Hill you, you've got the rum kitchen, and then you've got um, sort of tiki bars as well, um, places uh, in Glasgow like Tiki and Kitch, and then you've got um, lot, you know lots of places up in Manchester um, as well. Um, the the Liars Club is the main one up there. The Liars Club is a bartender hangout. It's open till four o'clock. You know. Uh, the bar's constantly got fire on it um, because literally they're they're flaming over proof rum uh, constantly, and it's it, it, it's it's a bartender dive hangout. You know, it's it, it gets it gets quite bouncy, and it's not somewhere you go to get the best trick. It's somewhere you go to unwind at the end of work if you're in hospitality. So that's an example of where Tiki has sort of broken out. Um, I wouldn't say it's badly done. Um, it is well done. They've actually got a sister bar called Cane and Grain, and that's mm -hmm. on three floors. And you're talking about specialisation, so they've got whiskey, beer, and rum, respectively, on, on, on different floors, um, which which shows you that there is life within category style bars that are not too cliché. So the Cane part of Cane and Grain is not tiki, but it's just a homage to to Kane's spirit as a whole, including obviously rum and obviously you know molasses based rum. So um, I think whilst tiki is important and um, it has a place uh, for, for bar tenders and trade and consumers alike, I think what's happened here only in the last two years is that there has been evolution of that, which is important. Because as you're saying, you know, is there something else? Well, I, you know, I think I've, I've comfortably seen that there is. How that transcends now into the wider sort of global market, um, only time will tell. And at the end of the day, some, some brave person has got to say, I'm going to do something with one that's different and make it commercially viable. Because Jason made a very good point that you don't do something well, you'll get found out and you'll get shut down. Um, so... You've got to find your niche um, with, within whatever you want to do, and you've got to make it work. Um, and if you're going to have a major nod to rum, then if you don't do tiki, what do you do, and how do you make it work? Um, so it's an interesting That's, question. No, it's absolutely. Um, Gabriela, it's, it's interesting to go to you because you know you were saying that Montreal is is a, is a young scene at the moment, so. Are there any rum bars? What kind of theme do they have? And if you were going to start a rum bar, how would you showcase that versatility? You know, the fact that it can be tiki, but it can also be straight or or mixed. Um, because um, yeah, there's a there's one really really old um tiki restaurant who just closed. Um, it's really <laughs> funny because uh, it was a really big restaurant, and uh, and when the tiki uh, the tiki mood started in Montreal. Nobody talked about that restaurant because it was really old. And it was actually he buy he used to buy stuff from a red old restaurant of Trader Vic and everything. And uh, well, and there's another one who just opened in the Chinese town, and um, and it's working pretty good. Um, for me, tiki is not only uh, tiki is not only about rum. Tiki is a culture. Uh, it's a culture from Caribbean, and um, but it's the, also the culture that uh, when you mix it with holidays, because people who bring back tiki in America and in Canada, everywhere, were in holidays most of the time back in the Caribbean. So it's why it's always funny, it's all refreshing, it's sunny, um, everything. But if we if we go to Caribbean and um, as uh, Miguel say, like if we go to Caribbean, there's a rum shack, and there's other way to drink rum that it's not tiki. Mm -hmm. Like so, I think that we can uh, show to the people over here that, like, yeah, there's tiki. Tiki is a culture. It's a mood. There's drinks for kids. Most of the time, drink that you remember that you got in holidays. But there's also um, all the culture over there that how they infuse rum, how they do it, how they drink it, um, 
ginger beer, Coca-Cola, straight. Um, there's not there's not a big big um, cocktail trend in the Caribbean as I so far seen, but I think that we can still more show um, not only cocktail but show more the rum than only the drinks. So, uh, that's that's interesting. You know, I I completely agree with you that you know, tiki is not only how the drink is made. It's, it's more of a you know, sort of a, a a culture or a, a a way of life even you know, for some people. But the question here, and I'll I'll bring, I'll bring this to Jason, is whether whether rum can ever um, move. Not you know that's there's nothing wrong with it, but you know you, the, it. If you if you think of a, a whiskey bar or a bourbon bar, you know it doesn't have to be themed around you know the Highlands or you know in the case of bourbon around uh, Kentucky. You know, and it, if it's not themed around Kentucky, people will feel you know because they they make it about the drink. Whereas if you're constantly evoking the Caribbean or the culture or the rum shack, you're actually you're not focusing on the drink. So, um, the how do you focus? How do you theme a bar, or how do you? Yeah, and then it's about changing perceptions. You know, can be can rum be an imperative? Can it be um, a straight drink? Um, so, in, in in from a bar perspective, how do you go about doing that, Jason? Well, if I were to open a rum bar, and okay. I'm not saying I haven't never thought of that. Uh, <laughs> I would I would approach rum in the cocktail menu, the drinks list, like I would any other drink list. Um, like you would a drink itself. It has to be balanced. So you have your you know your lighter to heavier styles, which you can easily do with rum. Um, you have your your drier your drier drinks. You have your your long drinks. Your short spirit heavy you know spirit focused drinks. Mm -hmm. You have your lighter fruitier section. Uh, so I think tiki can work itself in and should work itself in. To a proper rum menu in that style. So you start with your, you know, your rum and sodas, your mojito type drinks, um, your quintessential uh, rum cocktails, your daiquiris, your tiki's. Then into your more classically driven spirits like Manhattan's, Old Fashions, Presidente, is rum negronis. You know all these uh, different delicious applications that you can use. Um, you know a straight straight rum or, or aged rum in. Yeah, no, that's that, that seems like a sensible way. Maybe you should open a rum bar. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> no, how important? And you know, this is a little bit of you know bringing it back to the authentic Caribbean rum mark. And you know, I think that there's a lot, a lot to be said about you know what uh, uh, agave and mezcal and tequila have done. There's a lot of education, you know, about the drink. You know, there's that the, you know, it's not just about shots, you know, lemon and salt. Uh, so, how does a, an education-based Campaign like the authentic Caribbean rum, where we're talking about the category, the, the quality, the range, uh, the diversity. How does that help uh, in teaching? Well, teaching is, is a very uh, uh, it's not the right word in showing people um, how to drink rum. Miguel, what do you think? Uh, I think one of the really really cool things of this program or other programs that are probably not set up like this one, but like Mezcal, it doesn't have a, a whole campaign set up like this one of ACR. But it's got definitely a lot of people together uh, with a task, uh, with the same task of training people and educating them about what their spirit is about. I think the one thing that shares with the, this RAM campaign is that it brings to people, uh, not only the bartenders and the industry people, but all the consumers. The idea that the uh, spirits to be good, it, it doesn't only have to do with sophistication and really premiumness thing. Uh, like you know, like a vodka and gin campaign in the last years is been pretty much based on the sophistication and premium and bottling and stuff like that. Like a really good Scotch whiskey or cognac or gin, in what I was saying, uh, they were based on that. On, on a really fancy thing that is being constructed nowadays. What I like of this RAM campaign, as well as the mask I was saying, is that it brings another factor, uh, which is the culture and the uh, importance of 
people, true people working behind that. Uh, people with no money, people no, with no sophistication, but with values and, and a lot of history and culture behind them. Uh, and it is putting all those factors um, to play in what the value of the spirit is about. And I like that. It, it makes people to empath empathize, do you say empathize in English? Like yep. to, to feel more connect connected with the spirit and with the people who make the spirit and with, and with the place where the, where the spirit comes from. They don't feel apart from them, but more connected. That's what I like at this program. No, that's that's an excellent point. Uh, I will wrap up on, on on these final thoughts. I think it's great because we 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 talk about our campaign. It's always good to talk about our campaign. But uh, the 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 importance of a button. It's it's important to to, to remind ourselves that you know we are educating about rum and authentic Caribbean rum, but only to trade professionals. So. The question is, how important are your peers in actually changing perceptions about how rum should be or could be drunk? Damn it, what do you think? So just to get my microphone back on. Um, obviously, they're very important. I think there's a two way thing here. Sometimes, and this is what we're seeing a lot in London, um, you've got guys that have got all the ideas, and we're talking about bartenders, and, you know people that are literally the idea people, but they need a commercial guy to make it happen for them. So they need, like a chef needs his own restaurant, a really creative bartender who can do a lot of influencing and put out amazing beverage programs and concepts and put everything together. But they need a place to do that. And I think that's where some bartenders, uh, and these great innovators have struck it you know, lucky. Um, in current times. Others, however, um, have had to go at their own route. So they've started small and they've actually, you know, taken a car load in effect and, 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 and opened a very small bar with very humble beginnings. They're, they're basically they're carving up their own destiny. So you've got a lot of that going on over here. But, you know, the, the sort of the bartender is massively important in all of this. Uh, but it is a two way street because. A lot of there are there are lots of independents in the leading you know cocktail led cities in the world, and it's because of those independent places that we've been able to carve out such a renaissance of, of, of mixed drinks in the cocktail. But there's a reason that places can happen because either some guy's got money or someone's got a great idea and they take a massive chance. Mm. Um, and, and and I think the two go hand in hand. They're very very important. Um, New York would be New York without. That same thing happening. London would be London. Manchester would be Manchester. Glasgow and Edinburgh would be Glasgow and Edinburgh. You know, so um, there's a big. I always said there's a massive commercial argument and everything. But the success of one, um, that, that's that's exactly the same as well. Well, and I, I I completely agree. Uh, Gabriel, what, what do you what do you think are the keys uh, of you know the gatekeepers in Canada? You know the the bartenders, how much of an influence do they have on on how people drink? I think uh, that they, they have a lot of influence. Um, I think that if we promote a really good spirit and in maybe there's not a lot of good and great cocktail bar in Montreal, but if we promote, I don't know, one or two bourbon because um, the brand is really everywhere over here, not the brand as the product, but the brand as the people. Mm -hmm. So it's the people is really close to everybody and you know, you talk about his product because it's your friend and because you like his product as well and you make it taste to everybody. I think it's going to have a big, big influence. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a good example, um, Bourbon Makers Mark uh, made a really big job in Canada. In, uh, in Quebec, and SAQ, um, SAQ put the, pr uh, the price more expensive for uh, the bourbon because he was selling a lot uh, and because Maker's Mark was everywhere in the people. And I think that if we do this, if we do the same thing with the rum or any product, yes, people are going to use it, people are going to make taste to every customer that they have. And now the trend uh, for a cocktail um, is really, really popular. So people's going in the bar and they ask 
for discover new stuff. So bartenders is pretty much a chief that can propose everything, everything that he likes. So more we train them, more and more they know the story and the project, more they're going to sell it. And when you sell something, you always sell something that you know about, not something that you don't know. So of course, like, and if people ask you, ah, which rum, which rum would you propose? Like, they're gonna say like the rum that they know, that they taste, that they have worked with it. So uh, yeah, I think it's really important. I think the training of ACR is gonna be great. It's gonna open so many doors, like to so many bartenders in Quebec. Like people are really excited about it. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you, thank you, uh, Gabriel. Uh, Jason, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll end here. Uh, I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, how important is education in the U.S.? Um, and you know, how important are bartenders um, to, to to create this grassroots sort of um, effect on on the, on the drinks industry? As apart from you know brand-led initiatives. Well, U.S. is a big country. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I can I can only really speak for New York, which kind of is a microcosm compared to the rest of uh, the rest of the country. It's not really a great indicator of you know what it's like, you know, say, tending bar in Nebraska or you know Middle yeah. America. Um, that being said, in New York, there's definitely this sort of celebrity culture around a lot of the bartenders here, especially the ones when Amit was talking about you know a chef getting their own bar when one of these New York you know uh, up and coming bartenders gets their own place. That's the spot that a all the bartenders want to drink in, but soon it's being covered in the press, and now all the the consumers that are in the know they want to be seen there as well. Mm -hmm. So, getting those bartenders educated is key, um, and goes a long way, I think, in just kind of spreading the word and getting people to to think outside the box of rum and and not really associate rum with something they drink when they're on vacation, but something they can drink when they're just out and about in the town especially when they want to be seen as sophisticated or in the know uh, about the latest um, you know, top bars to be drinking in. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll just uh, end, first of all, thanking everyone for, for your uh, contributions and, and reminding uh, the, the, the kind people of uh, Canada and, Jace and, sorry, and the U.S. that we are currently running some uh, educational sessions uh, in North America. Uh, Gabriele, you, you've got one coming up uh, soon, uh, and uh, Jason, you've got a few as well uh, in the New York area. So, uh, you know, stay in touch. Um, check out our uh, social media handles. Uh, if you Google Authentic Caribbean Rum, you'll find us. Um, and uh, be sure to stay in touch, and we'll be back with another edition, and we'll probably talk about rum again, but that's what we like to do. Uh, Thank you, guys. Um, pleasure. Yeah.